Hello, and welcome to today's tips, tricks, and best practices for Microsoft Dynamics CRM. My name is Michael Dodds, and I am a support consultant here at LegendView Partners. Today's topic is how to create a personal view. Now, many of you might be asking, why do I need to create a personal view when my system administrators have set up so many great system views that everyone can see? That's a fantastic question. And a reason why you would want to create a personal view is if you have data that you're looking to gather that's unique to you as an individual or to your position that wouldn't apply to multiple people within the company. It would also allow you to create the view without needing to go to your system administrator. And it can only take five to 10 minutes and I'm going to show you exactly how easy they are to create. So let's jump into CRM and create a personal view. So within CRM, we're going to click on the Advanced Find icon right next to your name. And this is going to pull up the Advanced Find screen. And once it loads, I'm going to show you the most important piece to start off with. Most important piece in advanced find is setting the look for. So in look for, that's the entity that you are looking to create, get the records from. So if you're looking for accounts, you're going to set your look for to accounts. Contacts, leads, opportunities, what records you want to gather, that's what you want to set the look for to be. So for our scenario today, we're going to set the look for opportunities, and then you have use saved views. Because we created this, we open Advanced Find from the My Open Opportunities, it's showing us that saved view information. And My Open Opportunities is a system view, as you can see right here in our drop-down list. And you can also see all your personal views that you previously created right here. Now if I know I want to create a small change to this My Open Opportunities view, Instead of creating a whole new personal view, you can just go to the My Open Opportunities, click on Details, and then add any filtering criteria or columns that you'd like to to this view. Keep in mind that when you save this, you're going to have to save it as a personal view. The only people that can create or edit a system view that everyone in the company can see based on the security settings is the system administrator. For our scenario today, we're going to create a brand new opportunity personal view. So we're going to click on New. And then under the Select drop-down, we're going to set our first filtering criteria. We're only interested in opportunities in which we own. So we're going to set the owner to equal current user. Equal current user is very important because if you ever decide to share this view with another user, and don't worry, we will cover sharing views in another tip and trick video. But that's very important because once you share that with them, all of this will apply to them because the equals current user shows the records of the person viewing the data. For our next filtering criteria, we're interested in our estimated revenue that's greater than a thousand. So we're going to set is greater than one thousand. So that's a thousand dollars. Now an item that trips up a lot of people is when they're looking to instead of having each item that in your filtering criteria have to be met, setting two or three items to be either or. So today we're interested in estimated revenue that's greater than a thousand or if the estimated close dates in the next seven days. So to do this, we're going to set our drop down for our next filtering criteria to estimated close date and we're going to do next seven days. Now the way this currently reads is that the criteria that must be met to meet this view is the owner must be the current user, the estimated revenue must be over $1,000, and the close date must be in the next seven days. Well, we're interested in if it's 
either over a thousand dollars revenue or the opportunity is closing in the next seven days to do this we're going to click our drop down carrot and click select row for both estimated revenue and estimated close date and then we're going to click group or so now we have an either or situation in which the owner still must equal the current user but then it must either have a revenue over a thousand or closing in the next seven days. Now that we have our filtering criteria set, so we've narrowed it down to the records that we're interested in, we want to reflect those records with specific fields that give us the information we're looking for. So to do that, we click on Edit Columns. And Edit Columns is going to show you a few pre-populated columns that CRM feels work best with opportunity views. So topic, that's the opportunity topic or the name of the opportunity. Potential customer, today I'm going to show you how to pull in the contacts full name, business phone, and email address. So we're actually going to remove potential customer. I'm going to highlight it and then click remove. Estimated revenue, that's one of our filtering criteria, so I'm really interested in that field, so I'm going to leave that. And then I'm going to remove status reason. Now within the opportunity record, so any fields within an opportunity, record type opportunity, that's the entity we're looking at. I'm going to choose the account, interest in the estimated close date. So I'm going to check mark both of those, click OK. Now a little while ago I showed you, I'm going to sh I told you that I'm going to show you how to add the full name of the contact, their email, and their phone number. To do that, we go back to Add Columns. And many of you are probably wondering why I clicked OK instead of just going to this and adding these new columns. Because we're changing record types from opportunity to potential customer, so the related contact record, I have to add the columns from opportunity first. So we're going to look at potential customer, the contact related to this opportunity. Now I can add any field from a contact record in to my columns. So the ones we're interested in are business phone, so we're going to scroll down to B's, business phone, then email, and then full name. Once we checked all three, we click OK. Now we want to change up the order. We want to start with opportunity topic, but then we want to look at the contact, uh, the account, excuse me, then the contact's name, phone number, and email address. So all I'm doing is highlighting the column I want to move, and I'm using these arrows to move them. So we're going to go with business phone, Oop, one too far, and then email address. So we have opportunity topic, account, contact name, phone number, and email address, and the opportunity's revenue and close date. Now if you're looking at email, we all know that the email addresses can be quite long. We want to make this column a little bit bigger. So we're going to highlight email and then click change properties. Right here, select a width for this columns. Right here is there is your default. This is the current width of that column. To go up, you simply go to the right. To make it smaller, go to the left. We're going to go with 150 and click OK. So now you can see that the email column is wider. Now we're almost done with our columns, but I want to sort my information by revenue. I want to see the highest estimated revenue first and then descend into the lowest estimated revenue we're going to be winning in the next seven days, potentially in the next seven days. So we're going to click on configure sorting and then we're going to sort by estimated revenue and we're going to do descending order. A key thing to keep in mind is that you can sort by two different items. So you can do a primary sort by estimated revenue and then you can do a secondary sort. For our scenario we're just going to do a primary sort on estimated revenue in descending order. Click OK. Now that we have our columns set, we're going to click OK again on the columns. 
now we're ready to view, view our results. So if we click on results, now we can see the topic, the account, oh, but we're missing contacts, their full name, phone number, and email address. This is usually going to be based on a couple different items. If there's no full name, it means there's probably not a related contact. And if there is a contact but no phone number or email, it means their contact record is missing some very important information. So these columns can also help you keep your data clean. And then we have estimated revenue and estimated close date. And we have 26 records. Now, after clicking results, this is still just an advanced find. We haven't saved as a view yet. So we're going to click back on the advanced find tab, and we're going to click save as. And we're going to name our view as opportunities closing in seven days or over $1,000. And then click save. So now our view is saved, and we can see our use saved view here on the right under My Views. Now I'm going to jump into CRM and go back to our Opportunities view so I can show you where this will show up in the Opportunities entity. So under Opportunities, we're going to click our View Selector, and we're going to go down and we're going to select our My Opportunities Closing. And then if you want to create, if you want to keep this as your default view, so your first time logging into CRM, this will be the first view that shows up when you go to opportunities. You'll click the pin and it will go to a sideways pin. This means this is now your default view. And that's our topic today on my personal views. Be sure to check out our blogs, tips, and other resources by visiting our website at www.ledgerviewpartners.com. Are you ready to learn more about CRM or what Ledgerview Partners can do for you and your CRM? Contact us by email at contactus at ledgerviewpartners.com or by phone at 920-560-55. Thank you very much for checking out today's videos on how to create a personal view. Have a great day.